You boys had a good holiday? Yes, sir, Mr. Adams. <laughs> well, you know what? I was lying awake nights all summer thinking about numbers. Like six, four, five, one, three, nothing, and three, one. Any one of you guys know what the hell I'm talking about? Huh? Those are from the final against Montreal, Mr. Adams. Right, Red. The games we lost. Games we lost, right. Stanley Cup that we lost, right. I put together the finest team in the history of hockey, and you bunch of pansies just handed the cup over to those frogs in five pathetic games. Every one of you bums is a disgrace to the proud uniform of the Detroit Red Wings. You're a bunch of stinking losers. What the hell happened to you big shots? Huh? Kelly, you were the invisible man out there. Pavlich, good summer, huh? Gutless wonder. How, big fella, the hell happened to the almighty number nine in the Stanley Cup Finals? Ted Lindsay, Rocket Richard's favorite player. Terrible Ted, my ass. Our fearless captain here never got his stick once on that frog throughout the whole damn Stanley Cup Finals. Well, maybe you guys had a good summer, but I didn't because I spent my whole summer thinking about my team. Thinking about all the goddamn money that I pay you lunks. And thinking that in spite of the fact that I make you guys into heroes, that your desire has been sapped because you put your girlfriends and your wives and your families ahead of my team. Well, let me tell you right now that the party is over starting this season, starting right now. The Detroit Red Wings do nothing else but eat, sleep, walk, talk, and trap hockey. Because if you don't, I've got the train tickets to Edmonton right here. I've got 20 jobs on my team. 20 jobs, and every one of those jobs is open. And I've got 225 hockey players under contract to me, and every one of them would give his left nut to be a Detroit Red Wing. Do you understand what the hell I'm saying to you guys? They won't be much use in the NHL without their balls, Jack. <laughs> yes, that's right, Teddy boy. And neither would you be. 
All right, Jimmy, let's put these losers to work because I ain't paying them to stand around and make jokes. Back to it! Let's go! Jimmy, that young punk who thinks that Lindsay's so funny, cut him. It's the first day. Do it! How's the shoulder, Larry? Feels good, Cap. Not a twinge all summer. Let's get him. Marty! Marty! Jack, Lindsay saying it was a Scove trade last year that sank her. He says you gave away the check and center you needed to stop Bellavo in the finals. You got to come in. Stan, it's winning four cups in six years. That's the problem. They're not hungry. Which is why you gave them a good kick in the duck to start off the season, right? Boys, Jack? listen to me. At the track, the lead horse come around the last turn. He's got his tongue hanging out, his eyes bugged, and the lather boring off. He's scared, but he's out in front. That's what I want, and that's what I'm going to get. Now who's laughing? Hey, kid. Save it for the other guys, will you? Gordo, bonus time. Here you go. Hey, Marty, can you believe that Jack cut that rookie on the first day? Don't worry about it, Gordo. He's not going to cut the MVP. Where's my pants? Larry, how's the shoulder? It's fine. Feels good. Well, Mr. Adams says you better see the doc. Uh, why bother the guy less? I'm fine, really. Larry. When Mr. Adams says you gotta see the doc, you see the doc. September to March, hockey, April to July, recovering, August, golf. <laughs> Honestly, Pat, I don't know how you made that baby. Well, last August, I prayed for rain. <laughs> Bowling promotional a couple of weeks back. Yeah, I beat you. Good for you. You know what I saw? Yeah, yeah, I, just know I what saw you Fat saw. Jack telling us a lot of bills from the promoter. And what about the exhibition games we play? For nothing. nothing. Jack takes the gate on those two. Marty, Jack organizes that. Does stuff. he organize the Stanley Cup? Come on, Gordy, we're getting screwed. What are you still complaining about them playoff bonuses? Yeah, and don't tell me you're not. We're supposed to get two thousand dollars a man. I'm looking at sixteen hundred bucks here. Listen to me. Jack is skimming 20% off the top again. We're eating dinner here, Marty. That... Listen, Teddy, this is my niece from Niagara Falls. Uh, she's a big fan. Mary, this is uh, Ted Lindsay and Gordy Howe. Nice to meet you, Mary. So, what do you do? <laughs> <laughs> what am I, dog shit? <laughs> Mary, Mary, come back here. No, no, I'm the star of the team. Mary, I'm the one who... What are you talking about? I'm the one who... Look 
Colleen, you can't put the boys and girls skates. Well, I can if I file the pics off and paint them black. Besides, they're free. Hey, that's using the old noggin there, Colleen. <laughs> I always said you should be in there negotiating for Gordy. Oh, you're darn right. That old windbag doesn't scare me. <laughs> Gordy, remember, 2,000 this year. Let's go, Gordy. <laughs> so how much are you going to ask for? <laughs> We're not supposed to talk about money, Ted. You know that. I don't mean dollars. I am just mean percentage. Oh, come on, Teddy. OK, don't tell me. We won't talk money. You happy now? Yeah. Face it, Gord, you're the best hockey player in the friggin' world. You know, and if the top don't rise, then the, the bottom can't rise either. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but Teddy, you're not on the bottom. Well, someone's on the bottom, right? Someone you know, you drink beer with, you play cards with. Who? Just, just somebody, a, a guy. What guy? Gord, it doesn't matter what guy. Stop thinking so much, Gord, would you? Yeah. Stop it. You know. Gone just like that, Teddy. Oh, geez, Larry, I'm sorry. That jack plays me hurt all spring. Got so bad, I couldn't even shoot. And I didn't bitch once, did I, Teddy? Oh, he has a nerve to tell me. I gotta think of the team. How can I play a guy who can't even play? He called me a cripple, Teddy. Son of a bitch. Larry. Keep in touch, huh? Sure. Now, big fella, last year you had 38 goals and 41 assists. Not a bad season, unless, of course, your name is Gordy Howe. Big fella, tell me, how does a guy with your talent go two, three games without making a single point? Then, of course, there was the playoffs, which I won't even mention. Uh, I know, I, uh... Well, last year, Gordy, you got... Twelve thousand dollars. It's a decent wage, wouldn't you say? Yes, it, it is, Mr. Even Adams. though you disappointed me, I'm prepared to go out on a limb again for you this year because, big fella, I got faith in you. I really do. So, you fill in what you think you're worth, and I'll live with it. I hope this will be okay, Mr. Adams. Oh, I'm sure it will be. I'll improve my game this year. I promise. Oh, I know you will. Do me this favor, though, will you? Don't tell the others what you're getting paid, because it might make them jealous. Oh, sure thing, Mr. Adams. Not a word. Good. I have a secret. Thanks very much. <laughs> That's the same damn thing every year. I don't have the money. If I give you more, I've got to take from somewhere else. Do you really want me to steal from Hal, Lindsay, and Kelly? Now, Glenn, you know that Mr. Norris doesn't make a nickel off this team. He's in it like you and me because he loves the game. I'll just keep this number a secret between you and me, okay? I'm ashamed of it too, Mr. Adams. You want to read contracts? Go be a lawyer. You want to play hockey? Sign it! Yes, sir. Jack? Well, there's your contract, Teddy. Oh. 10,000? That's what I got last year. Where's my raise? You had a shit year last year, Teddy. What the, what the hell are you talking about? 
I was an all-star again. I got 27 goals. Which put you 12th in scoring, 12th. You were just coasting out there, Teddy. I had a bum back all year, you know that. Yes, and am I supposed to give a raise to a guy who's all washed up? You're lucky I just don't get rid of you. Oh. Oh, that's good. I see, like you got rid of Scove last year. Well, you watch it. That was beautiful. You know, Jack, I used to respect you, but, um, well, you loosen your touch. I know hockey better than any man alive. That's including you and especially you. Now sign that damn thing and get out there and go to work. I'm not signing that until I get a raise. You're not getting a raise, so just sign it. Nope. What do you mean, no? You don't sign, you don't play. Well, fine, then I don't play. You'll play, and you'll play for what I decide to pay you. No, I don't. Well, what are you doing? You quitting? No, I'm not quitting. I'm just I'm not signing that until I get a raise. Look, when I played the whole damn team together, only got five thousand dollars. What you're making? Get back in here! Get in here, sign this thing. Gentlemen, I'm pleased to report that general revenue has increased for the seventh straight year. Our figures are up by fourteen percent. That's the largest increase to date. And Mr. Smythe informs me that our players' pension plan is in surplus for another season. Best of all, our player costs have declined again this year. All in all, I consider this to be a most gratifying report. Now, if I can prevail upon your... Telephone, Mr. Norris. Mr. Bruce Norris. Who is it? Probably your ex-wife. <laughs> the question is, which one? <laughs> it's Mr. Adams. He says it's important. You're supposed to take care of the players, Jack. Now, that is your job. Yes, and I want to suspend that little ingrate just to teach him a lesson. No, no, no. Now, Lindsay is the heart of the team. He fills the seats. Christ, I'd lose a fortune if he didn't play. But he is way out of line. Look, Jack, I know you take your salary out of what's left over after you pay the players, but you're getting greedy. Now, you keep Lindsay happy, Jolly Jack, and you get me back my Stanley Cup. You know that young Lutch still thinks the Stanley Cup is a giant shot glass? At least his father. May he rest in peace. He knew hockey. Your real problem's Lindsay. Are you trying to tell me my business, too? I'll handle that swell-headed jackass. Just you watch me. Damn near the money I asked for. Jack must be getting soft in the head. <laughs> what do you say when he give it to you? What are you kidding? Yeah. Fat Jack committee rolled over. The That's secretary up. spoke to me. Clerical error, she said. Oh! <laughs> hey, Lash, where's my sweater? Clerical error. I'd like a goddamn clerical error. Give me all the clerical errors you got. <laughs> hey, Lash! I'm not going out playing in my gaunt, you know. I need my sweater. Thank you very much. Okay. All right, boys. Got an announcement to make. Mr. Adams has made a change for the good of the team. I want you all to get behind the decision. Red Kelly's the new captain. I want to see some contact out there tonight.
Ted. Let's go, Cap. All right, guys, let's go. Come on now. Boys, head up. Let's go. 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 Jack, mm -hmm. you've had Lindsay under your wing since he was a kid. Right. Taking away the sea had to hurt. Oh, yeah. It broke my heart. But you know, uh, what Teddy's getting on, he's 31, eh? So we talked it over, and, uh, well, we both agreed that leadership was a huge burden for a man of his age. Is Red Kelly going to be able to inspire the guy? Oh, sure he can. If it's the last thing I do, I'm gonna find a man who can annihilate that bastard. What's your name, son? There you go. That's James. What's your name? Let's just leave him, boys. Let's go. 
Very close. Come on, come on. Let's I'm sorry, man. That's the real thing. This isn't a fake. This has actually been used in the garden. Now, you see how the taping goes here? You know who used this stick, son? Tim Horton. Only 50 cents. Here, try it. Dad, please. Dad, can I have it? Please, Dad. Oh, it's garbage. You know, get away from the bum. Come on, Dad. What have I told you about talking to strangers, sir? This guy that you're calling a bum is Busher Jackson, and he used to fill this place. That's Busher Jackson? That's Busher Jackson. Get out of here. These could have used you out there tonight, Busher. <laughs> Thanks, Teddy. Get some meat. Oh. It's Simpson. Les! Les, get an ambulance! So it's nip and tuck, getting the kid to the hospital. Turns out he's got uh, a severe concussion, a broken nose, cracked teeth, <laughs> and a bruised shoulder. Oh my God, is he okay? Oh yeah, no, he's a tough kid. Two weeks later, he's out of the hospital. He shows up at the practice just to say hello. And Fat Jack finds him 50 bucks, <laughs> sends him down to Edmonton. Well, why would he do that? He's gonna have to pay for another move after he just got here. Yeah, but that's part of the game. Yeah. And the last one anybody thinks about is his poor family. His wife's gonna have to pick up and haul those kids all the way to Edmonton, and after that, who knows? He might be traded to Springfield, Springfield and or wherever. wherever. And then they're gonna have to pay for that move. And, and they, they have don't no have no money. Money to mm -hmm. pay. Say goodbye to Bell. Hey, Larry. How you doing? <laughs> Good. Look, uh, come on in. Pat's just making supper. Uh, no, no. I already ate. I, I don't want to impose it. I just need a minute. E sure. Come on in. Kids. <laughs> uh, you want a drink? Yeah, of course. Hey, what the doctor said? Uh, you know I can't afford a regular doctor, Teddy. As soon as I was cut, the wings doc is out of bounds. Yeah? What are your plans? Joyce and the kids moved back to Flint Flon, live with her mom. I just can't face going home like this. Hey, but I was thinking, there's the pension, right? We all put in 900 bucks a year. I played for seven years. That's 6,300 bucks. Yeah, that's about right. That's, that's what I want to talk to you about. You still one of the player reps on the pension committee? Yeah. Me and Doug Harvey. Well, I was thinking, maybe I can get my money out early on account of my injury. No, uh, you know the rules. You gotta be 45 to draw it down, Larry. Yeah, okay, all right, sure, but... Maybe I can get a letter from the league saying what I'm worth. I could take that down to the bank, borrow against it. Hell, I can go into business. Well, there's a meeting in Montreal next week. I'll see what I can do. That's great, Teddy. That's great. That's all I needed to hear. The NHL pension plan is the best in professional sport. Well, then how come I can't get a straight answer? Look, we got a guy who needs his money. So how do we get it to him? Mr. Lindsay, as I have already explained, from an actuarial viewpoint, it would seriously jeopardize the plan by setting such a precedent. How about if he borrows against it? Could he do that? No. So until he's 45, he's shit out of luck. Crudely put, but accurate. Now, if you'll all turn to page 166. Well, you know, uh, Doug and I have been talking, and we don't know why the players can't run this thing ourselves. But it's our pension, and he won't even tell us how much money's in it. You'd bankrupt it in a year if you were in charge. It's a pain in the butt for us, Lindsay, but we do it for your own good. Hey. Hell, we don't even charge you for our time and expertise. You should be damn grateful. Come on, let's move on. Certainly. Uh, now, if you'll all turn to page 166 of my brief marked fiduciary obligations of governors. There you go, sir. I got the world on a string sitting on hey, Ted. a Teddy. My friend, John. Sure. Good to see you. Oh, Teddy. So how'd it go? I'll tell you the truth, Larry, it didn't go so far. What do you say? They said, ruin the plan. You let guys in your situation take their money out early. <laughs> Ruin it? How? Hey, the truth, Larry, I'm not even sure myself. I'm not gonna lie to you, Danny. I'm hurting. I'm living in my car. I, uh, I don't have as many friends in this town as I thought. I don't 
want your charity. I want my money. I don't know. I gave him my best shot, all right? I'm sorry. <laughs> you sorry? <Yeah. laughs> sure. You don't give a shit. You got a job. All right, sit down. You're worse than Campbell. Well, I'm gonna pretend I didn't hear that one. Yeah, sure, why not, huh? You're good at it. You're pretending you're gonna help a guy, then you let the league snow you. <laughs> you know why, Teddy boy? Off the ice, you don't scare anybody. Larry! Larry! Son and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, before we enjoy this bountiful meal, allow me to introduce our very special head table guests. Immediately to my right, he has pitched three no hitters in his illustrious career from the Cleveland Indians. You know him as Fireball and Bob Feller. Next to him, a man I am proud to say is no stranger to us here at St. Francis. He has won the Stanley Cup four times. He has just been named an all-star on left wing a record 10 consecutive times from our very own Detroit Red Wings, terrible Ted Lindsay. And next, also from the wings, also the winner of four Stanley Cups, he is the big Buick on the right side of the production line, and watch those elbows, Gordy Howe. Thank you, sir. There you go. Thank you, sir. Jim. Bobby, sir. Oh, it's just darn frustrating. Every second question I ask comes back. Don't worry, Teddy. It's the best pension in all of sports. There you go, Mark. Your, uh, What's your name? Trevor. Trevor. How did you guys find out about your pension? That's what I want to know. We hired a lawyer to kick the owner's butts. Well, did you, did you get any results? Atta boy. Always keep your fingers on the seams, eh? Bob. You want to ask him? What? He's right over there. Mr. Mount, oh. I must be up. Milt, this is Ted Lindsay. Hi, Ted. Milton Mount. Nice to meet you. You think the ball players are a bunch of cotton pickers? <laughs> Wait till you hear this. You stand there and say you're going to pick me the same as last year. Come on, Jack. No, 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 no. There ought to be an annual raise. You know that? I'm paying you guys 20000 a year. You know oh, that. The cards are a free promotion. You ought to be paying me. Oh, Lindsay. Oh. Where the hell is Lindsay? He, he said he had to go visit his sister, Mr. Adams. He told you that? Why the hell did he tell me? He knows about this promotion. And he knows we gotta be in Montreal tomorrow for the All-Star game. We gotta be on a train tonight. He said he'd meet you for the game in Montreal. Oh, he did, did he? Hey, Gordon, come on over. Come on. Hey, Gordy, come on. Don't forget your bubble gum here. Thank you, sir. All right. A union? Forget no, it. No, nothing will change until you organize. Look, we're not truck drivers, Milt. We're not coal miners. Yes. We are hockey players. We're not the kind of guys that unions are for. Come on. All right. So how much do you make in a year, Mr. Lindsay? I'll be making twelve thousand dollars this so season. After eleven years, you make twelve thousand dollars. A rookie in baseball gets seven. Oh, come on, that's baseball. All right. What if I could prove to you that NHL hockey is the most lucrative sport in North America? If the owners tell us they never make any money. I have no reason not to believe. The owners them. are lying. They've been lying to you for years. These are from the Kefauver Commission investigation into organized crime. I have a few friends in the Justice Department. Organized crime? What in hockey? Mostly boxing. But boxing and hockey are tied together in the States by Jimmy Norris. Forget Canada. Canada's easy. Smythe, 
He owns the Leafs, owns the arena. Same is true in Montreal. Senator Molson, he owns the team, he owns the rink. But Jimmy Norris, he owns or he effectively controls all four American teams. Chicago, New York, Boston, Detroit. Jimmy Norris is the NHL. His brother Bruce here, he doesn't really run the Red Wings. He's a figurehead. Oh, wait, now I know there's a rule that says you can't own more than one team. I know that. Yeah, there's a rule against bank robbery, too. Now, you see the fella standing beside Jimmy? That's Frankie Cabo. This is the button man who killed Bugsy Siegel. Oh, well, so you're telling me Jimmy Norris is a mobster? I'm saying that he hangs around with mobsters. In boxing, they all do. Ted, these men are powerful and they are vicious and you need the protection of labor law. Okay, okay. I admit that we're being screwed. <sighs> And I know that we need to do something, but the players are not going to buy a union. Well, then, I know these no, guys, Milt. They're not going to buy it. Hell, I won't buy a goddamn they... union. The best we can do, and I mean this, the no. very best we could do is maybe some kind of an association. No, no, this is not going to work. Do this my way, Milt, or we just don't do it. No, Ted, in America, we freed the slaves a hundred years ago. But then again, they wanted to be free. Hey, Jimmy, I gotta talk to you. Get lost, Lindsay. I gotta skate with you. I don't gotta talk to you. Oh, no, I gotta talk to you. Hey, you wanna dance? I don't give a goddamn if it is the all-star game. No, Let's I gotta go. tell you something. Gon Smythe is stealing from you. He's taking food right out of your kids' mouths. Oh, what are you talking about, you stupid turd? He's stealing from you, Jimmy. Oh, yeah. Gus, you're looking good. Listen, a couple of guys are getting together later on after the game. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing your 19th... NHL All-Stars. Mesdames et messieurs, nous sommes heureux de vous présenter le match des étoiles de la Ligue nationale de hockey pour la saison 55-56. From the Toronto Maple Leafs, George Armstrong. The Maple Leafs of Toronto. Yeah, right after the match. Lindsay! I'm fine, you 50 bucks wise ass. How do you come off making arrangements to get here on your own? Hey, I'm here, ain't I? Well, next time you ask me. Now, don't embarrass me out there. What's all this about guys stealing from us? Yeah, we're gonna get to that, all right? We're gonna get to that. Look, I appreciate you, you boys coming out. I know we're not exactly natural-born allies. Got that right. Boys, this is Milton Mount. He's a labor lawyer from New York City. He's got a few things to say to us. General, Ted has asked me on your behalf to look into the uh, business side of the game, and based on what I have found, I think it is time that we question some of the myths of hockey. Number one, if, why, don't, why don't we come together and send other yeah, things? Yeah, Let's All get right. these tables up. Guy, oh, look alive, will you, Gus? <laughs> Number one, the first myth. There's no money in hockey. The owners, they're barely scraping by. That's right. That's bullshit. Gentlemen, the New York Yankees is the most popular sports team in the biggest city in the world, and they don't make half what the Detroit Red Wings do. Number two, Jimmy. 
Jimmy Thompson, please come in. No, no, nice to meet you. Have a seat. The NHL owners are in it for the love of the game. For them, it's, uh, it's like a hobby. Bullshit. Those men own the rinks, and they suck profits out of the teams, and they hide them in the building's books. Three, the NHL can only support six fully professional teams. Bullshit. The NHL is a private club, and the owners keep it that way because they don't want to piece out the gold mine for the NHL pension plan is the best in professional sport. Boom. Jesus, what have you found out about the pension plan? Nothing. Dick. Zero. And I'm telling you, when you sniff around a pile of money and the other side clams up, they are hiding something. He's got a point there. Right. <sighs> I can do with a beer. Hmm? Hey, Jimmy, take yeah, 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 yeah. Take care of it. Get him a chair. Here you go, Milk. Thanks, Jimmy. The owners are making a lot of dough. A uh, few fellas. Now, I'm, I'm sure that you've all counted the seats in your rink. So, Jim, how many in the Maple Leaf Gardens? 14,000. Times how much a seat on average? Four bucks. Times how many home games, including exhibition and playoffs? 40. Say 40. 40. 40 times 4 is 160. 160 times 14,000 is 1.4. You add concessions, and you add other sources of revenue, and that's about 5 million dollars. Jimmy Thompson, you deserve a fair share of that. What can we do? <laughs> well, I've already recommended to Ted that you uh, organize a union. No. Uh, no, no union. I know. He made it clear to me that union is a a dirty word to hockey players. <laughs> Damn straight. So what the hell are we doing here? Boys, welcome to the first meeting of the NHL Players Association. Players. Yeah. yeah. I like that. That's association. Yeah. Lindsay, you're 50 bastard. What are you talking about? Oh, you want to hear about it? Let's clear this table off. Yeah? I thought I heard someone talking. You woke me up for that? Well, what's the matter, Lassie? You You're lonely? You go to sleep. Can I let? <laughs> you? I guess we're still in Pee Wee. <laughs> we must be. Why else can't we see our own contracts? Why else can't we see the books for the pension fund? You know the rules. You're not allowed to talk to the press. You're not allowed to talk money. You're not allowed to talk to the other hundred grunts who are part of this league. And you're sure as hell not allowed to talk back. That sounds like kids to me. I don't know about this association stuff, fellas. I mean, do we really need this? Ah, oh, come on, Gordy, don't be so damn stupid. Teddy, shh, Red. Teddy, you've been talking all night. What's on your mind, Gord? Well, I figure we got it pretty good. I mean, I've had real jobs and so will all of you. But this, this is playing hockey, it's fun. It pays good and heck, it's only six months work. Why rock the boat? I know you guys, have... You're the cheapest bunch of sons of bitches on God's green earth. But empty up your hundred bucks and let's get this thing started. Thanks, Red. Believe me, you're not gonna regret it. We got one clean shot at forming this association and standing up like men. Now, for Christ's sake, let's take it. It's that easy. Well, what's a hundred bucks? The fridge can wait. Oh. I'm in. Thanks, Marty. Mm-hmm. 
100 bucks, boys. 100 bucks. One less trip to the salon for your wife this month. Thanks, Red. All right, who can lend me 15 bucks? <laughs> Glenn, for you, it's 85. <laughs> Thanks, Danny. You owe me 15 bucks. <laughs> are on their way up. Who have you elected president? Well, well Teddy, you got to be president. Be yeah, Teddy, you do it. You got to say. Why me? Well, because you're the head shit to serve. That's why. <laughs> hey, boy. <laughs> huh? Well, what do I say? Out of 120 players in the league, 119 have joined the Players Association. We've each contributed $100 to pursue a common goal, improving the game of hockey. We want to discuss getting some reasonable benefits, the same reasonable benefits that most other professional athletes already have. Among them are moving expenses, a dental plan, minimum contracts for rookies, and a pension plan that's open to review by the players. Now, I've fought every man at this table, and uh, we've uh, put our differences aside to better the game by helping the players. Any questions? Yeah, what are the yeah, owners going to say? Kenny, Kenny is, is this union prepared to strike? This is it's not, not a union. union. Mm. It's not a union. We're not talking about striking. We just want regular meetings. Yeah, so you can, so you can run these commie tactics behind the owners' backs? Oh, that's not even a question. What do you got behind? What Perhaps I can answer that. Every professional sport has an association. And by any yardstick, these are reasonable requests. So we expect a reasonable response. 35 years. 35 years that put into this team. I fight to get you guys decent salaries. I put every one of you before my health and before my family. I sweat blood for you guys. I make you into goddamn heroes. And you betray me. You sneak around and you, and, and you stab me in the back. I thought we were family. You're a bunch of gutless wonders. You make me want to puke, but you, you're not even worth the vomit. Are you for this? Are you? Well, take that damn thing out of your mouth. Now answer me, are you for this? You? Oh. Glenn. Are you for this? Yeah. Red? What about you? Are you, are you for this, Red? Hey, big fella, I know that you're not for this.
Time will take care of you, my friend. Time will take care of you. The end of the great game of hockey. That's what we're facing today. A small group of greedy players has been led astray by external agitators who are not cognizant of the fragility of Canada's national sport. For hockey is not about money. Hockey is about dreams. The dreams of small boys on frozen ponds and backyard rinks all across Canada. I am grateful for the understanding and the vigilance. That's a nice speech, Clarence. Our... So how are we really going to respond to this? Hockey players don't have the fortitude to see this through. My advice is to ignore the whole thing. In Montreal, our business is... Well, we have got to wait for Jimmy. Your brother's opinion is not the only one that counts. With all respect, Mr. Smythe, doing nothing is an option. Our businesses have successfully worked with unions in Montreal for decades. When one has a monopoly, they can make only limited gains. I'm not going to let some Jew coming lawyer from New York talk my players into joining a Jew coming union that I have to pay to support. I built my rink from the ground up during the Depression. Those ungrateful bastards will tell me how to run it over my dead body. I'm going to smash them. Very eloquent, Connie. And for once, we agree. But let's not go off half-cocked and draw attention to our difficulties. I've already got the feds crawling all over boxing. I don't need them on hockey, too. Quick and quiet, we'll go after the ringleaders, demoralize them. We'll cut off the head of this association, and the body will die. We'll start with Lindsay. Jimmy, he's my favorite player. Well, serves you right for letting him get too big for his britches. You'll call Jack Adams today. The rest of you will follow suit. And gentlemen, our problems will be over. Now, which one of you cheapskates is going to buy me supper at the best French restaurant in Montreal, eh? appointment with Mr. Campbell. Your name, please? Milton Mount. Yes, Mr. Mount. Have a seat, please. You sniveling communist son of a bitch! The Toronto Maple Leafs wear blue, not red. You'll be playing elsewhere from now on. I flew in from New York for this meeting. Pardon me. I flew in from New York for this meeting. I'll bless him again. Something's up. The guys are scared, Ted. Is this the guys talking or you, Gordy? Well, maybe we should pull back. Pull back? We haven't even done anything yet. Gordy, are you still in? You in, Gord? Yeah. I'm in. Oh! Meet me down there. Meet me down there. What's going on with Glenn and Martin? Mr. Mound, I'm sorry. Mr. Campbell has left for the day.
I've come to the most difficult decision of my career. Today, I traded Ted Lindsay and Glenn Hall to the Chicago Blackhawks. What? what? Oh, Jack, Jack uh, was this uh, Hall's our future in the goal. Lindsay, he's having his best season. You dumped now. Lindsay because of that association. No, 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 no way, no. I am strictly a hockey man. I know that uh, Ted's numbers look good, but that's really a tribute to uh, Gordy because, you know, uh, Big fella's been carrying him all year, to be honest with you guys. Come on, yeah, Jack, you can't say I that. made the move for the good of my team. Thank you. your team now, Gordy. You take care of it. I don't know what the hell we should do. Fourteen guys traded, nine more sent down. They're killing us. Goddamn Smythe called me a commie. He said I'd never play for the Leafs again. Yeah, it's all going for shit. Maybe we ought to just fold the tent on this association, huh, guys? Oh, yeah, no big moves out of Montreal, eh, Dougie? The Habs know how to build a winner. What are you saying, Fernie? You know I got no control over that. What the hell do you think I'm saying, huh? You know what I'm talking about. I'm sick and tired of this, okay? Don't even talk to me I'm sick of it. Take it easy. Look, I got guys calling me day and night. They're scared for their jobs. They want to quit. Think about it here. What's to stop them from just dumping all 120 of us? Oh, or what's to stop them from just cutting our pay in half? I mean, what's to stop them from doing anything? You know damn well what's going to stop them. You just need the guts to do it. Uh, uh, guts? What the hell are you talking about, guts? Hey, I put my, my, whole, my whole career on the line for this association, and what happens? I get flushed down the shitter in Chicago! Ted, if you certify, you can put an end to this kind of arbitrary harassment and intimidation. Milt, the guys aren't going to go for union. I told you that. No, no union. union. No way. Look, boys, we tried it your way. You got screwed. Now, either you want to need the protection of labor law or you are defenseless as Alabama sharecroppers. The owners have dropped the gloves on you. Why aren't you swinging? Down there for two hours. He's not talking. Not to me, anyway. Hey, Teddy. Talking all the beer again. Say it's only a paper moon. Say that all the You're sounding pretty good for a guy that's going to Edmonton. Well, that, my friend, is because, Gordo. I'm not going to Edmonton. Come again? I'm quitting the game, Ted. <laughs> you know what? Adams gives me the news. I said, go piss up a rope, Jack. I finally told him off. Oh, jeez, Marty, I'm sorry. Mm -mm. Don't be. Don't be. The association was the right thing to do, and I'm proud and honored to have been a member. Even if it was for only six days. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <sighs> For a no talent plugger from the Sioux, I had a pretty good run, huh? Jeez. With you guys gone, I don't even feel like playing no more. Yeah, she's the end of an era, boys. Lindsay to Howe, over to Pavlich. 
and the puck to flex up into the cheap seats of time. <laughs> <laughs> just struck me. What's that, Teddy? I'm never gonna win the Stanley Cup again. Ted, it's the police. Apparently the guy was living in the car. He must have got drunk, fell asleep. Cigarette started the fire. He suffocated. There was a couple other rubbies here. Said he was always talking about you. I don't, I don't know how he could have known you. We found a, a bunch of hockey junk near the car. It's Larry. You know him? Yeah. Yeah, we used to play together. Teddy? Milt, it's Ted Lindsay. Let's go for certification. You realize this means forming a union? Yeah, I know the guys will kick and scream, but I'll bring them around. You were right. It's time to start swinging back. Players are attempting to certify one team in each country. In Canada, it's Toronto. In the United States, Detroit. If successful, they will become an international union. And they'll really have our nuts in a vice. Goddamn Lindsay. I believe we can assuage the crisis by announcing a reform package of our own. No! No concessions, Clarence. Stick to making up the goddamn schedule. Well, we can't just lie back on the ropes and let them take their best shots. Hell, they haven't even found the real money yet. They still think this is about moving expenses, broken teeth, and a base salary for rookies. And if they certify, they'll get a look at the real books instead of the bullshit ones. Connie, you got to stop them cold in Toronto. I will. Union Station, next stop, Toronto Union Station. I played my junior here. Is it Mike's? But naturally, Smythe figured I was his property. When I signed with Detroit, he's hated my guts ever since. Yeah, so what else is new? I thought everyone in hockey hated your guts. Ah, Smite's different. It's personal. I'm not sure I can be any good in there. Wake up, pal. Let's go. As president of the NHL, I want it on the record that the league bylaws prohibit the players from belonging to a labor organization. If you vote to certify, 
we will be forced to expel you from the <laughs> NHL. Oh, you vote to certify, you'll finally Please. find out what is in the pension plan. Stop it, little scum and his Jew buddy here. Spell sheer disaster. It's Mike, it's hard to believe that you fought against the Nazis. Hold! Order! Gentlemen, we're here to conduct a certification vote. That's all. Move on. I repeat, the NHL bylaws... What bylaws? I've been in the league for 12 years. I've never seen no bylaws. They're right here. May I see them, please? No, they're confidential. How can a bylaw be confidential? Only the governors are privy to them. It says so right here in the bylaws. Well, you show me where it says that. You are prohibited from seeing the bylaws. It says so in the bylaws. Gentlemen, this is not about bylaws. Darn right, it's not. May I speak first? Boys, you are the Toronto Maple Leafs. You're the envy of every youngster in this great country of ours, for good reason. You're at the top, the NHL, stuff of your dreams. And you work in stiff and look at you and say, those guys have it great. They play in front of the big crowds. They stay in the best hotels. They make two, three times what any regular working Joe does. Grown men look up to you boys. Kids clamor for your autographs. You're darn heroes and you deserve to be. I beg you, don't let this rabble rouser endanger the family we call the Toronto Maple Leafs and the game we all love with demands that I just can't afford. A union will bring it all crashing down around our heads, boys. Surely would. Oh, family, eh? Well, why don't you ask Busher Jackson what he thinks of your family? Go ahead, Con. He's right outside. <clears throat> you know, they're gonna be building a hockey hall of fame down at the X pretty soon. And it's a pretty sure bet that Busher's gonna get a plaque in there, right? Along with the rest of the kid line. But Busher doesn't need a plaque. He needs a place to sleep. And when you see Smythe's plaque hanging in there, it sure as hell ain't gonna say, Con Smythe, the cheap bastard who sold busted hockey sticks to Busher Jackson for a friggin' quarter. Sorry. We are a family, boys. Us, the players. But let me ask you something. How can we have any respect for ourselves if we can't help a guy like Busher? Or stop a guy like Larry Saharchuk from hitting the skids and dying, for Christ's sake, after he's dumped from the game? They're not gonna help those guys. We have to do it. Us. The players. They are making millions of dollars off of us and every guy that's played this game in the last 30 years. And until we stand up and say, this bullshit has got to end, they're just gonna keep on walking all over us. There'll be nothing to stop them. The cheap bastards that own the NHL are not hockey boys, we're hockey! See, Con, you're right. We do love this game. And we'd play it for nothing. But not when you're charging money to watch us. Well, it's time to shit or get off the pot, boys. It's time to shit or get off the pot. Gentlemen, we'll now proceed with the voting.
In the matter of the certification of the Toronto Maple Leafs Hockey Club as an official bargaining unit under the Ontario Labour Code, the players have voted unanimously in favour of certification. <laughs> Yeah, I'd rather take a cross check and a teeth than make speeches, believe me. One more in Detroit next week, right? Milk, milk. Detroit's gonna be Could fine. I know those guys. We're gonna, file, we're gonna file the antitrust suit against the league tomorrow. Yeah, fine. Let them have it. It's war, right? Everything, Mr. Mount. <laughs> Jimmy, have you read this antitrust prep? Uh, now why would I want to read it? I've already got an ulcer. Why? Because your name is on it, for one thing. We've monopolized and obtained complete control, domination, and dictatorship of hockey. They want three million bucks in damages. Don't get yourself all worked up, Jimmy. Bruce, you better go out and have a nice steak dinner tonight, because the food in jail ain't going to be so hot. Come on, they don't put you in jail for running a hockey team. But they do. If you've got an extra thousand seats that aren't on the books, that's fraud. You write off your ice show debts against the hockey team. That's tax evasion. You scalp tickets for kickbacks. You bribe the city to keep your property taxes down. I'm a businessman. You're a drunk. Jeez, I got a rash from head to toe from all this. Can't sleep. Yeah, it's keeping me up nights too. You, you were told to root out the troublemakers. You screwed up. You know what Smythe did wrong in Toronto? He let it get to a vote. You got to make sure there's no union vote here. You gotta get to their minds somehow, turn them against Lindsay, because he's still the guy they rally around, understand? Lindsay is still the problem. You know what else my sources in Chicago are telling me? That Ted Lindsay is going around slagging Howe and Kelly. <laughs> he is calling a big fella a crybaby. That prima donna is still trying to sink my team, even now. Now you see why I had to get rid of him? And look at how much he was making. Look at that. 25,000 bucks. Highest paid man on the team. He was getting twice what Gordy Howe makes, and still he had to go around stirring up all this union shit. Ted Lindsay is a cancer on hockey. He's going out tomorrow? Under source, close to the wings, like usual. What you call gossip, I call news. What the hell is the difference? I got you tickets for the Patterson fight, didn't I? And how many hot suppers have I bought you, huh? Fine, fine. I'll call your publisher. Then shut up and start writing. This is for tomorrow, right? No, 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 no. Leave my name out of it. Good. Reliable sources in Chicago have informed this reporter of that terrible Ted Lindsay has been bad-mouthing his former teammates on the wings in a most cowardly fashion. Lindsay has been heard to say that, quote, Red Kelly is Jack Adams' stool. And there's more. Gordy Howe, the greatest player in the game, was, quote, afraid to go to the bathroom without me, according to this jerk. But never fear, Howe will shake off the cheap shots. The big fella will endure, for he is made of far finer stuff than this gutter snipe. A dirty player on and off the ice. That's Ted Lindsay. Now, let's come out and say it for all to hear. Terrible Ted was nothing but an overpaid whiner. But with Lindsay out of the way, the man who had the courage to dump him in the face of public criticism stands to reap his just rewards. Teddy, I'm counting on you to teach these bums how to win. OK, boys, hit the showers. Teddy, Teddy, why'd you do it? Why'd you 
crap all over hell like that. Is that any way for a union president to act? What the hell are you talking about? Make a players water union led by a guy making 25000 You call that solidarity? What guy? You! You! It's all over the Detroit papers. Yeah! Hey! hey. Who planted it? Adams, of course. Easy, Ted. There's Easy. nothing that he won't sink well, to. Uh, maybe we should shift our ground. Boston or New York. We will do an end run on Adams. What I want no, you... It's, it's got to be the wings. No, no, but Ted... Milt, there's just not enough character on the other teams. Well, then you better get on the next flight to Detroit. Lindsay, Mr. Norris wants to see you. Mr. Norris. Call me Jimmy, Ted. I thought now that we uh, were on the same team, we might have a little chat. <laughs> I had no idea you felt this way about the Red Wings. <laughs> you know what you're trying to do, Jimmy? The boys aren't going to buy it. The boys are going to watch their backs, Ted. The sooner you understand that, the sooner we can all get past this aggravation and back to business. Uh-huh. Well, me, the players, we're going to finish what we started. What you're going to finish is the NHL. Oh, yeah. Look, mister, I've got the feds poking into boxing up, down, and sideways. I sure as hell don't need a hockey union on my ass, too. You think I give a shit about the Hawks? I only keep them around, so I have a boxing arena. Yeah, I will. So you'll keep them. Uh-uh. Forget it. You don't get off my back, pal. I'll close this squad of money-losing schmucks. Hell, I'll close the whole league. One man can do that, huh? Controls the whole league. Well, that's funny. Because that's kind of what our lawsuit says. Now, wouldn't it? Don't crack wise with me, you little shit, or I'll break you. You gonna do it, Teddy? You gonna force me to close down the whole league? and kick all these dummies out on the street to look for work just to prove that you're a big man. You do what you gotta do, Jimmy. I'm seeing this thing through. You know, I'm getting a rash all over my body, for pity's sake. You OK? Oh, I appreciate your concern. But you know, it, it's, it's all because of this, Lindsay. I just can't believe you'd say those things about the team and Red and me. Well, it's in the papers, huh? It's on the radio. They don't, they don't just make that stuff oh, up. He's you know? just upset about the Chicago trade. No, That's you got to see through Lindsay's moves. you got to see right inside him and see what he's really like. You're telling me I don't know my best friend? We boarded together. I lived in his basement before I got married. I know how you feel, big fella. I really do. I mean, hell, I took him under my wing when he was a fresh young thing. Just the same as I did with you, Gordy. You know that I'm godfather to his boy. You know that, don't you? Well, listen to him now. Like a raving maniac. Just doesn't sound like Ted. Well, he's a changed man. It's sad. Jealousy will do to a man. Jealousy? Oh, yeah. He doesn't want to see us take the cup ever again. And he figures if he stirs up enough shit, the Detroit Red Wings will collapse. You know something? It could work. You think about what I said, huh? Big fella. You think about it real hard. Promise me. Sit down, man. Wanted to talk to me? Oh. Jesus, my heart. You okay, Mr. Adams? Hello? Colleen, it's Ted Lindsay. I'm at the airport. Ted, what's going on? I don't have time to explain now. Uh, can you tell me where Gordy is? 25 grand. How did he get that much on a fat jack? Sonny, did you know this stuff? Well, I just never gave a shit about any of this. Right? Stuck up for me. You can't stuck up for all. And what do you think, huh? What do you think, huh? Mr. 
Mr. Norris has got something he wants to say to us. Guys, how you doing? Now, I hear you think that I'm uh, making a fortune off of you. Well, I'm not going to lie to you. I wish the hell I was. My dad, he, uh, he saved this team during the Depression. It's been in my family for 25 years, and we haven't made a dime, honest to God, not one dime. So we sure as hell cannot afford a union. My gosh, a union. Now, boys, we are small business here. If our costs go up, well, we're going to have to close down the wings. Well, they're good boys, Mr. Norris. Uh, they want to do the right thing. It's just that they've been led astray. I've never kept a secret from you guys, not a one. Now, these are the books. I want you to go through them. There, see for yourselves. See? Look at all that red ink. Look at her. I wouldn't blame this good man if he fired the whole lot of us ungrateful bastards. How do we get ourselves into this fix? I'll tell you how. One man. One man tore this proud team apart. One man ripped the heart out of every one of us here. One man pissed on everything that we hold dear. Thank God. Ted Lindsay's gone. Gone, except for one thing. All this damn talk about unions. When I look around me here, and I, I see a room full of bright and hard-working young men. You need someone else to do your thinking for you? Do you need some rabble-rouser to speak for you? Do you need the richest hockey player in the world destroying our league? while he sits back counting his money? Do you need a blowhard prima donna forcing you out on strike where you don't make a nickel and you can't feed your families? All for some goddamn union. Are you for that? Are you? Red, are you for that? Big fella, what do you think? Do you want to see the Detroit Red Wings die? Tell me, son. I think, I just want to play hockey. Detroit Red Wings are out of your association. Ain't gonna be no union vote. You son of a bitch. Hey guys, what happened? Hey, we can't quit now. We got them by the short hairs. They're scared of us. We need this, all of us. What do you need it for, Teddy? You're rich. 
Wait, you believe that shit in the papers? You actually bought that shit? Guys, you're making a big mistake. Rick. No, I don't, Ted. It's not your team anymore. Gordy! This is not about teams. It's about 120 guys who need leaders to look out for them. Gordy, it's about you and me. You and me, we got to make this, this union work. Otherwise, hockey's going back in the same damn dark hole it's always been in. Today I am pleased to announce the salvation of hockey. Our players have brought many pressing issues to the league's attention. And the NHL's reform package answers them all within the economic limitations of the sport. After all, hockey has never been big business. It's just a game. I just want to say that I think we're closer to our owners today than we ever have been. Is that why you guys dropped the antitrust suit? That's right. Are you guys really happy with what the NHL gave you? Yes. We have the right to ask for a meeting anytime we want. And we can sit down man to man and talk. We don't need no antitrust suit. And we don't need no union. What we need here is a toast <laughs> to the best pension in sport. The players. Right. No, if I may. To the NHL. Here, here. Here, here. here, here. here, here. Say it's only a paper moon sailing over a cardboard sea. But it wouldn't be make believe if you believed in me. It's a Barnum and Bailey world, just as phony as it can be. But it wouldn't be make. If you 